All right, so I'm going to show you how I aerate my wart. Um, I use a, uh, a standard aquarium fish pump. Um, I have a HEPA filter and a, uh, dif a diffusion stone. Um, now, when I, when I built this system, I guess you can call it, I had trouble with the uh, air pump. Uh, yeah, with the with with this aquarium pump because um, it has a super tiny nozzle coming out of it. So I uh, it came with this uh, really small diameter tubing, and my diffusion stone. Um, you know, it has this really nice barb on it, but it's like it's it's much bigger than the tubing from the aquarium pump. So um, I had to rig up this little. Uh, I kind of had to hack this together. I just uh, uh, got the right size tubing, slid it underneath there, and just like taped it up a whole bunch. Um, you're, if you're better at me than doing this kind of stuff, I'm sure you can have something that looks a lot better. So, um, pretty much, uh, it's really dirty. So yeah, what you got to do is make sure your uh, diffusion stone is clean and sanitized because you're going to put it in your beer. So I got a whole bunch of bubbles up in here. So we got a whole bunch of air going through that. Um, so pretty much what you do is you brew your beer. I brewed this yesterday. Um, so uh, it's, it's, what's the temperature? We're right about like the mid 60s. Um, so I just let it sit overnight to cool down. Um, let's get my tubing all nice and sanitized. So you're going to want to sanitize all this tubing. Um, so let me kind of set that in there. Let's get my spray bottle. Yeah, so anything that touches the beer, you're going to want to sanitize, obviously. So this tubing's going to be up in there. There we go. Get your workbench all nice and wet. And there you go. I don't know if you can make that out. There you can see some of the air starting to come in there. So, oh! minor mishap. So, I'm going to let this run for about an hour or so. Um, I don't know if that's overkill or not, but you know, I don't think it'll it'll hurt anything. I guess I guess the opening it's open to uh bacteria, but I don't know, I'm going to I'm going to play it risky, I guess. Okay, so it's been about 5 minutes. Um you can notice that there's a lot more uh foam in there. Um I guess I can that, that should be the color of the head of my beer. Uh I brewed a porter uh, use some chocolate, dark malt, special B, um, and uh, two row as as the base malt. Um, used about two ounces of uh, Fugles in here. Um, I, I mainly tried to make a clone of the Edmund Fitzgerald Porter from uh, Great Lakes Brewing. Um, so let's. I, I, I'm hoping that this turns out all right. Um, all right, so I'm going to use this uh, California ale, uh, ale yeast. This is their new uh, pure pitch um, thing. You're holding the industry's first pitchable. Wow, what a bunch of bullshit. Oh, look at Chris. He's got a PhD. What's up, Chris? Hey, thanks for this nice uh, pure pitch. Um, but uh, something that's kind of funny on here, uh, in, the, in the instructions, it says that uh, you need to add it to cooled aerated wart. So uh, this is really the first time I'm actually going to follow, I'm going to follow directions. Um, so, all right, so let's take another check at this beer here. Um, there's a lot more foam in there. You can see, uh, I guess uh, the floor is a little bit crooked. <laughs> Cause yeah, there you go. 
All right, so uh, the last time I aerated my wart, um, it had uh, a crazy amount of Krausen. This thing was super active. It was great, It, um, it but it was like overflowing. So last time I, I did a blow-off tube, and I'm glad I did, uh, because it, it, it got pretty messy. Um, so I'm going to use my flask as the airlock. I'll put some star sand in there. And I'm going to leave it in this bucket because uh, the last time my airlock overflowed. Um, thankfully, I still put it in this bucket. So the only thing I really had to clean was the bucket. Um, so if you're going to aerate your wart and you have a, a pretty active yeast, um, even if you don't, and this might be safe, uh, it'll save you a lot of trouble if you um, put it in a bottling bucket so that uh, when it overflows, you won't have a huge mess on your hands. Um, but the last time I aerated it, I, I did a uh, I did an IPA with some citra hops and the East Coast Ale yeast, and that uh, yeast was crazy. It 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 was great. Uh, it is a excellent beer. So I'm glad that I aerated the first time, or last time, and I'm hoping I get the same results with this one. Alright, so one thing I've learned that um, you can't have too much tubing. Um, I'm always running out of tubing. I either misplace it or I don't clean it out right, and, uh, or I use it for something else and I need more. Um, so I got this uh, 3H inch tubing off of Amazon like a hundred feet of it um, so uh, it's pretty nice to have because uh, I'm gonna need some of this for my blow-off tube and I don't know how much you think I need all right so I'm gonna add just a little bit of star sand to my uh, airlock um, just want to make sure nothing grows in here I don't exactly know how much you need but saying that an ounce is good for five gallons, I'm sure just a little drop of it will be fine for uh, like a thousand milliliters. So I'll give it a good stir. Good, make sure it's all foamy in there. All right, so um, we're back. I turned off my air pump, uh, I unplugged it, and I'm gonna remove this uh, this airstone and it's like super dirty, super, super messy. So um, I have this bucket of water in here. I'll just set that in there so it doesn't get too messy. All right, so now we're gonna pitch the yeast. And this is my first time using this White Labs Pure Pitch. So does it say to shake? I think it says the shake. What does it say? Instruction, store yeast, I did that. Yeah, I warmed it slowly. Oh, mix contents well. Okay. We're mixing. Alright, so we got a little bit of pressure in here. Um, I cleaned my scissors. I'll just use a little bit of extra star sand. just to be safe. All right, so here we go. A little bit of pressure just came out, okay. Ooh, it smells great. All right, so here we go. You can, uh, if I can get the camera. That's our yeast right in here, just like a double baggie. All right, so now we're turning our wart into beer. How does it? There. Looks like they got all of it. Oh, it smells great. I love it. Um, all right, I guess I'll give this a nice swirl around. Try and 
Get the yeast all up in there. Nicely aerated. Awesome. All right, so let's put our airlock on here. All right, so now it's time to put our airlock on. Um, let's put this in our bucket. Let me uh, screw that back on. And uh, give this a good spray. Let me spray the top here. All right, so we can officially call this beer. Uh, I'd like it to be just a little bit cooler um, before pitching because, of course, the temperature is going to rise a little bit. But I'm in my basement. It's November. Um, uh, at night, it'll probably dip down. So we're going to wrap this one up here. And uh, curious to know how long before we start seeing some uh, activity in here. Okay, so it's morning. Um... I can hear that it's bubbling, so it's fermenting. Uh, the tube's pretty clean, so uh, it's probably not uh, going crazy like I thought it would, but uh, let's see what it looks like. There we go, it's it's fermenting, awesome. Some pretty good krausen. Uh, temperature. Oh, it's perfect. All right, hey, it worked. Okay, so uh, that is how that's how I aerate my ward. I think I think that really helps uh, the uh, yeast uh, eat up all those sugars. Oh, hey, thanks for watching. I can't believe you watched this whole video. Um, you must be really interested in how to do this. Uh, so feel free to ask any questions in the comments.